My name is Ivan Tom, and thank you for taking the time to watch this TEDx video from inside of my home office. During this pandemic, having a peek inside somebody else's home is not that uncommon anymore. There are lots of these virtual video meetings going on. Many changes have happened in a short period of time, and some of these changes will become part of our new normal. One change I've seen that I believe is going to last is that the king is dead and long live the queen. Now, I don't want to spread you know, any fake news. Our king, William Alexander, is not dead. He's alive as ever before. So why do I say the king is dead? I will explain. But first, let me tell you a bit more about my own story. When I was young, around nine years old, I wanted to become a police officer. Catching criminals, I thought was just the coolest thing to do. Then a few years later, in 1986, I was 14, the movie Top Gun came out. And I was convinced I wanted to become this fighter jet pilot. Imagine the excitement flying at the speed of sound, doing crazy tricks. And then I grew up and became a marketeer. A desk job that doesn't really raise your heart rate. I'm not living my dream, you might think. Now, let me tell you, the truth cannot be further away from that. Yes, as a marketeer, you spend a lot of time behind your computer, in and out of meetings, but you also have to get out of your ivory tower, away from the office, and spend time in the field, meeting customers, observing consumers, trying to understand their motivations and their needs. And that is much more exciting than as you might think. The mission of marketing is to have more people buy more products at a higher price. Marketeers create this desire for things you may and also may not really need. Take the iPhone, for instance. When the original iPhone was launched in 2007, you had to pay $605, adjusted for today's uh, inflation, for a phone with a two megapixel camera, which couldn't even record video. Now in 2016, almost 10 years later, they launched the iPhone 7, which was only 10% more expensive. It had this great you know, 12 megapixel camera and a larger screen. And then just one year later, Apple launched the iPhone 10, which jumped to a price of $1,000. Now the marketing machine of Apple has done a great job, creating this desire that many people believe that they truly needed this $1,000 phone. Brands continue to fuel our desire for growth, to get the latest, the biggest, the best, when they become part of our lives. Another good example is BMW, the ultimate driving machine. As a single young professional, you may start with a 116 hatchback, and once you get married and have a, you know, your first child, you move on to the 320 model. Then more kids and more money will come around, and this takes you to the 530, touring and finally when you have you know have really made it you end up alone in a 750. this final car is bigger more powerful but also first year for gas heavier with more steel that requires much more energy to produce and this has become a bigger focal point for many as a marketeer i've observed that today people are more and more concerned than ever about the impact they have with the brands they choose and products they use every day. They look for brands with purpose that are authentic and not only care about making profit, but truly care about the environment as well, eliminating uh, child labor or addressing modern slavery. People choose brands that give the overall best experience and not only the short term thrill. And that's why I believe we can say that the king is dead and long live the queen. Because historically, you know, women have been more capable than men to care for others, for future generations. Now, why is that? Scientists have tried to explain this by looking at the differences between men and women inside their heads. The neuroscience literature shows that the human brain is not the same between sexes. There are distinct anatomical differences. For example, 
brain image studies indicate that adjusting you know for the total brain size because men do have bigger brains than uh, on average than, than women a women's hippocampus which is the part that is critical to learning and memorizing is larger than a man's and works differently but more recently Gina Ripon, a professor at the Aston Brain Center, has tried to shatter this myth of the female brain in her latest book and claims that a gendered world produces a gendered brain. Now, whether or not there's a biological, hormonal or cultural driven difference, it doesn't matter to make my point. The end result is that studies have shown that women can actually feel another person's pain at a higher degree than men. And this does not mean that men are not empathetic. You know, it's all relative, not absolute. Men also can't change their chromosomes and, and genes. But still, men can catch up to women in this area. And they are catching up. As a marketeer, I see so many signs that men are showing more and more their softer, caring, let's call it their queen side. Men are replacing their big engines for hybrids or fully electric cars. They are wearing trendy shorts with fabric made of recycled PAT bottles. And they even call themselves flexitarian and enjoy <coughs> a few meals a week without any meat. And this change is not only happening uh, in day-to-day -day life, it's also happening in business. Not only is there an important effort to have more women in leadership positions, but men are also more and more practicing servant leadership not focusing on their power and authority, but removing their ego and enabling their team to succeed, leading with compassion. So in that sense, these kings turn into more caring queen leaders. This change is amplified by the current COVID-19 pandemic. As described recently in The Lancet, COVID-19 has triggered more compassion in our world. Today's pandemic has created an economic crisis, pushing millions out of their jobs, millions of people infected, hundreds of thousands have died. But COVID-19 has also triggered an enormous rise of social behavior, with neighbors helping those isolated and supporting frontline workers. In some ways, the pandemic required people to keep their social distance, while it also has brought them closer together generating an understanding that our health is all interlinked. And this understanding has made it possible for people to better emphasize with others. People feel more connected, acknowledge the impact they have on others, on the environment, on oceans, and for example, on all those animals in the meat industry. This need is on the rise and it's important for companies and their brands to follow and meet this need in order to stay relevant and survive on the long run. Just imagine that tomorrow everybody would stop drinking any Coca-Cola products in plastic bottles. Can you imagine? Coca-Cola will be bankrupt in months, perhaps weeks. It will change this landscape. However, this will not happen overnight. And that's perhaps a good thing. Coca-Cola is a beautiful brand. However, they have to change. Plastic has to be reduced. Like today, plastic straws are being replaced. Consumers have more power than ever to demand positive change. This may not be new news. You know, companies like Unilever have been pursuing their sustainability goals for years. But they were early. Their employees, suppliers and customers were not all that ready that time was not right. But today, it is. Every challenge provides an opportunity. And COVID has paralyzed the world and enabled a positive movement at the same time. And as part of that change, I would say, as a marketeer, the king is dead and long live the queen. So be more empathetic as a consumer today. Be a more compassionate leader tomorrow. And each individual of any sex will contribute to a better future for all of us. Thank you.